All right, guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my thousand piece puzzle of my series two Escort RS Turbo. Now, for those of you who are new here on the channel, there's only about nine or 10 of these series two cars in Australia, and they're all personal imports. So it makes this job of converting this car to EFI extremely difficult because I'm constantly waiting for parts from the UK or having to make my own, which is what I'm gonna to attempt to do in today's video. So let's cue the intro and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So for those of you guys that know, this is my engine bay. A lot of you have already seen it. I'm pretty happy with it. However, when I did put the engine in, uh, we were lowering the crane and I did drop the crane chain onto the rocker cover. And I need, so I need to take this off now because it has cracked. Um, but, so I need to take this off and redo that, but the engine is in now, happy days. So with my EFI conversion, obviously the MFI kit would normally sit here. Um, and I wanted to move the turbo from behind the radiator because it really just just heat up in the Australian summer and move it here, a little bit more airflow around it and hopefully keep it a bit cooler. Also gives me the option to fit a larger turbo, which is gonna come in a, another video at a later date. So I'm still trying to decide which one to go for. But because I'm putting the turbo there, I had to remove the ABS system. Um, and cause my dump pipe's gonna come all the way down here. And of course you guys know that the original brake master setup sits here now there is a guy in the uk i'll link his channel in the video description down below um, ocd productions he's running the same manifold different turbo he's got a forged build over 300 horsepower in a front wheel drive series 2 escort rs turbo it's absolutely insane car and he's running his master cylinders over here but he's also running a uh, custom intake manifold and um, previously that he was running the Series 2 Escort um, MFI intake manifold with an EFI um, you know, conversion down here. And that gives him more space here, space that I don't have because I'm running the Fiesta EFI manifold. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm still gonna be using the brake bar and I'm gonna be mounting my brake master cylinders, two, one for the front, one for the rear here and that is what I'm gonna to attempt to do today. So let me show you. I'm gonna unbox this because I have not yet unboxed my welder. I've never used it before, I've never even welded, but I'm gonna give it a crack. And I'm just gonna mock something up with these two brackets today. Um, and this is my basically just a cardboard cutout just so I know roughly the size and stuff. And then I'm gonna make something out of all of this, measure it up, make sure it fits, and then fabricate something properly. So <clears throat> these are the original brackets. I am gonna use these. Um, sit that there. So I am gonna use these and uh, this way, is gonna sit in there and I'm gonna have the two master cylinders, whoops, two master cylinders sat on the end there. And then I need to plumb in the whole brake system as well, because I don't have any brake lines or anything like that yet. But these are my master cylinders that I have. I got two Wilwood master cylinders. They are different sizes, so you can see that this is a dot 70 and a dot 62. Now um, I'm running the same master cylinders as the guy in the UK who's running the same um, manifold setup. And he uses this master cylinder for the front brakes, the smaller one and the bigger one for the rear brakes. And that's what he's doing. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and he doesn't have a brake booster. 
either because he's obviously got his master cylinders sat there with the remote reservoirs um, over here somewhere. So I'm gonna look at maybe putting the reservoirs on top of the master cylinder. If that doesn't work, then I might try and mount the um, reservoirs in here, but we'll see how we go. So with that being said, guys, I'm gonna have a crack at doing this and um, wish me luck, I guess. All right, guys, so um, I forgot to press record when I was setting up the welder um, and kind of practicing, and I've got my uh, practice piece here, which I'll show you in a sec. It's really, really freaking bad. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna show you and you guys can laugh, but um, I'm still gonna go ahead with what I'm doing today because what I'm making today is not the finished product. I'm literally making something so I can take it to a professional and say, I need you to make me this, but it look good. Um, because yeah, you know, like, I ain't gonna fucking clue what I'm doing, but uh, let's have a look at how I'm getting on. So this is my practice piece and there's heaps of um, splash welding, I don't know what you call it, welding splash or something, as I was like just doing this and just to see how it worked. Um, and I did this bit here to see how it worked. And then I was like, okay, cool. Let's try and put them together. So I then tried to like tack or like weld these, this bit here to this bit, which is kind of what I want to do with the real bits. Um, and that went okay-ish. And I was like, all right, let's see if I can do the long edge, but it's actually really hard to keep it steady. Um, and then, and you can see here, I practiced again, and then I was like, it kept like waving um, because I really ain't got a fucking clue what I'm doing. But then I was like, hold on. So I put my finger on and my thumb on the welder and guided it as I came down. And I got this bit here, this really nice clean one. Um, you know, so I was actually pretty happy with that. And this is a gasless welder I'm using as well. So then I came over the end here and I was like, oh, okay, let's let me see if I can do this. So I did that there. And now, I'm putting these together. I'm just gonna do some like welding, I was like spot welding um, along here. So these are all, this is all on there already. Um, so that is on there and then I can take it to someone um, and get it made properly. Seriously, who thought welding would be so freaking difficult? There you go, guys. That is the extent of my welding so far. Hopefully, I get better. Ow, that's fucking hot. <laughs> It'll sit in there like that. 
which is cool. Um, obviously not that one. And I break master cylinders. basically going to sit there like that and that's going to connect on to this bar the breaker bar down here so yeah a few moments later so this bear with me I know it's a mess these are the brackets that held in the standard brake booster and master cylinder setup. And then I cut that out and attempted to weld it in. Um, and I have never welded before in my life. So it's, it's not too bad. I did clean the, the welds up a little bit as you can see, but... I thought I've got this big sheet of steel, so I'm going to cut one, and this is what I did. I drew a template, folded it to make sure that it worked and fitted and all that kind of stuff, and then I cut out from the sheet metal this bracket, and this, it's the same thickness steel. It's just as strong as these here. Um, so yeah, let me show you how this goes. So this is obviously gonna look a heap, heap lot tidier and the master cylinders are gonna sit on the front here. But that is basically gonna sit in there like that. Happy days. Love it. Really nice. So I'm happy with that. And then I'm just gonna cut a hole in here so the brake bar fits in because i am using the standard brake bar and i still want to uh, maintain that because it you know it works um so i just need to measure up that hole measure 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 heaps and heaps and heaps of times and then measure it again just to be double sure and then cut it out you know i am going to cut out um, a section on each side here and then above that hole is going to be about there and then I'm going to cut out another section um, about here because my brake bias bar attachment is going to sit in there obviously like that and there's a cable that fits in this end and you can adjust the dial to adjust the bias between the front and the rear um, master cylinder. So that's that. I'm absolutely stoked with that. I did finish the video yesterday after kind of making this and I slept on it and I came back and made this. So I need to cut out the front to put the master cylinders in. Cut out the hole on this side for the brake bar and then cut out a section in here and in here so I can fit my bias bar and we're good to go. Guys, that's it for another video. Thanks so much for watching. If you're still here at the end, birds are going crazy today. If you're still here at the end of the video, it means you're liking what you're seeing. And if you haven't yet, subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. Make sure you do that. Because like I said, if you're still here watching now, you clearly like what's going on. So support the channel. Much love. See you in the next episode.